coming. Thank you for inviting me, Lucy. Um, thank you all for having me here to speak to you. Um, I've lost my um, distance glasses, I can't see you very well, but um, I hope you can see me and I hope you can hear me. Okay, um, I speak about disability rights, human rights, um, social injustice, austerity and the cuts, um, and I've been doing this since the Tories came into power, and I'm really excited about the fact that we're going to have a general election and we're going to have a chance to actually get rid of them. So uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that my talk today will be very brief, but will inspire you all to um, get involved in actually campaigning between now and the elections to really get every body out there and voting and using their vote to get this lot out and bring back humanity into this country. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this government came into power with the, the help of the Lib Dems in 2010. And as soon as they came in and the cuts started hitting, uh, a group called Disabled People Against the Cuts was formed. Have, you, have any of you heard of DPAC, Disabled People Against the Cuts? Yes. Yeah. Uh, a couple of people. Okay, now Disabled People Against the Cuts was formed in 2010 to fight this government, to fight the cuts. And uh, the first thing they started to say was, the cuts will kill. People will die. Yeah, there's no two ways about it. If you do this, people are going to die. And they were told, you're scaremongering, you're just making stuff up, stop scaring people, etc. So in 2011, a year later, just one year later, under a Freedom of Information request, the government was asked, how many people have died within six weeks of, you being, of them being told that they are fit for work and left with no money, with their disability benefits being taken away from, from them, within six weeks of that decision, how many people were dead? And under a Freedom of Information request, they had to respond. They took their time, but they responded, and they gave us a figure for 2011. Not even the whole year, but just part of the year, 10 months of the year, they gave us a figure. Does anyone want to hazard a guess of how many people they admitted had died within six weeks of the left with their money? Anyone want to have a guess? Anyone else? 312. It was 10,600. 10, 10,600 10, disabled people, all left without their benefits, all dead within six weeks of being told, you're fit for work. 10,600. Can I have a show of hands? Did anyone know about this? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five out of here. Now this is what's happened. When a freedom of information request is done, when they respond, that's technically now in the public domain. But when the public don't know about it, we have to question why don't we know about it? We don't know about it because our media is controlled by the millionaires who are backing this government and their cuts and their austerity. They don't want us to know that our brothers and sisters are dying, are being left to die. Now these were people who were dying anyway, but their last six weeks of their life was left with nothing. Their last six weeks of their life was spent fighting, struggling, trying to make ends meet, trying to get their rights and justice. These were people whose conditions plummeted with the stress and strain of it. These were people who committed suicide. But whichever way you look at it, dead is dead. They were all dead. And it, not a word of it in our papers, in our BBC. When 10,600 people had died, when the government had admitted that 10,600 people had died, it should have been on the BBC, it should have been on Channel 4, it should have been on ITV, it should have been on every single radio station. 
to let people know that something horrendous is happening, that people are dying. But no, not a word. This is where Deepak comes in. This is where each of us comes in. We have to become the truth sharers. We have to become the knowledge bearers. We have to take responsibility for letting people know what the government is making sure people don't know. This is why I've been speaking for all these years. This is why I'm here today. To, to, and um, I can speak to whoever I can reach, but I can never speak to the people that you can reach. We all have to know how important and powerful our voice is. And just keep speaking our truth, finding our truth, speaking on the bus, speaking on the tube, speaking at home, speaking in your churches, speaking in your libraries, speaking everywhere you possibly can, and getting our truth out. I always say to people, if you closed your eyes and tried to picture the logo of Coca-Cola, could you picture it? The majority of people could. And the reason why is because it's put in front of our eyes again and again. We need to do the same with truth. This government is spending millions of our money on hiding the truth from us. They recently had a campaign in the metro and where they were putting out adverts about universal credit and pretending it was a journalistic piece. Deepak had a campaign where they collected all the metros on Wednesdays when this issue came out and put them in the recycling. But they also complained to the Advertising Standards Authority. And the Advertising Standards Authority upheld that. They said this government was in breach by having those adverts and pretending that they were journalistic pieces and forced that those uh, adverts to be withdrawn. Um, and that's our money that they spent on those adverts to try and con us into believing that universal credit is okay. And no, it isn't. The universal credit has a rape clause, is attacking children, is attacking women, is attacking working people. It's the, the majority of people on universal credit who are being hit by it are, work, are in work. They started their attacks with disabled people. They let people get it normalized to hunger, to food banks, to charity, to feed people. They normalized these things, got people to accept homelessness and poverty and inequality, and then they started rolling out their universal credit, hitting even more people. And it is not all doom and gloom in that they have created this inequality, this poverty. The poverty and inequality are not Accidents, they're not hand of fate, they're not an accident of birth. They are deliberately creations. They are political choices. We have a choice at this election to say no more, enough is enough, and get rid of them. We need to remember who we are. That's one of the biggest messages I can give anybody, is remember who you are, and remind everybody around you so that they too know who they are. It is our taxes and our national insurance that goes into the coffers that they are using. It is our taxes that pay their wages. From the Prime Minister, the Queen, the police, everybody's wages, the DWP's wages, everybody's wages is paid for with our taxes. And when you pay somebody's wages, what does it make you? It makes you their employer, it makes you their boss. You are the boss of Boris Johnson. When he lies, you have the right, the duty and the obligation to call him out. With every single one of our politicians, we all have the right, the duty and the obligation, and not just us, the children, the grandparents, every single person. And they like to make out that it's only the people who are in work who are taxpayers. But it is every single one of us that is a taxpayer. And when they cheat and rob someone of their benefit entitlements, they rob all of us. Because there is a contract 
a social contract. When, we pay, when they take our taxes and national insurance, automatically, we have, when, they, when you pay your VAT, when you pay your national insurance contributions, they automatically take it. But the contract is, we pay it and they pay out. They pay out for a national, for a national health service, they pay out for our social security safety net, they pay out for our pensions. They're cheating pensioners now. There, there's, I don't know if you've heard of the Mosby women. The Mos yeah, there's the, the, 50, the women of the 50s are being cheated of their pensions. And they started with them, and now they want to have that affect everybody else as well. They want to move the, the pension age to 75. Yeah, just at the same time as people's, the, the life expectancy of the, of the poorer people <coughs> in, the country, in the country, their lifespans are falling, their life expectancy is falling. So they move it to 75. No one's ever going to get to 75 to collect that pension. But we, the people, employ them. We are allowing that to happen in a way by not challenging it in our masses. There's a few people, there could be even a million people fight it. But when you think that the population of this country, yeah, it's about 69 million, when one million fights them, when a thousand, a hundred fight them, they say, the majority accept it. The majority are behind us. So we need to let them know, no, we don't accept it. We care. You might not care about our brothers and sisters, but we care. We care about our NHS. We care about our social security system. When you cheat them, you cheat us. An injustice to one is an injustice to us all. And all of us can stand up and boot them out. And let's do that. So, um, um, I've got a whole lot of information there, some leaflets and flyers about universal credit and how it's affecting disabled people particularly. So please pick them up. Between now and the election day, give them out. Take hands full. Give them out to as many people as you can. Engage as many people as you can. Share the truth. Be the truth sharer. Shine your light. We're made of stardust. We're meant to shine. Shine until they cannot hide the truth any longer. Until they cannot just use propaganda and rhetoric to demonize ordinary people and vilify ordinary people while they rob us to death. Um, I've got one last thing, and that's, as this is a charity that feeds people, it feeds people because we want to stay off hunger, hunger that this government is putting on to people and children. Um, this is a song that I learned in the 70s. It was about seeing starving children in India, going to bed hungry, going through the bins to find food. And I never thought for an instant that there would be a time that we would have children going to bed hungry over here, that people would be having to raid bins to find food to feed themselves, that we would need to return to Victorian times when we need soup kitchens to feed ourselves. Um, so I'm going to sing this song for you. I hope you like it. It is on YouTube. If you do this, if you decide to like it, please do share it. It's a really important song because it it's, reminds us again that hunger is not something just in the third world. It's something that's affecting everybody. And no child anywhere should be going hungry. Not when one week's worth of what the world spends on arms trade, on fighting, on killing. One week's worth of that would make sure that nobody goes to bed hungry anywhere in the world when we realize that how much food is just chucked out by supermarkets and restaurants and things when people are going hungry, it is just shameful. And again, it's us who need to say to our governments, enough is enough. We stop the waste, we stop the killing, we start regreening our planet, we start feeding our children, we stop the killing, we, stop, we start supporting life instead. So, here goes. It's in Hindi. Um, and it's a child asking their father, will there be food tomorrow? Why, is why does inequality exist? 
Did it exist in their father's childhood? Will it always exist? And we can say, no, it doesn't have to exist. We can change everything. Our voices matter. Let's use them. <coughs>